All right, so I'm not really sure how to start this off, but I'm going to tell you my testimony. And I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but I will say thank you if you watch to the end. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm just going to start with um, my childhood. And you might be wondering why well, your childhood have anything to do with your testimony. Just wait. It all ties in. I promise you. So growing up, um, I never had a lot of money. When, uh, I wouldn't say, you could say poor. Maybe poor sometimes would be an understatement at that. And I was fat and I used to get made fun of a lot, a lot. And I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't have very many friends. What friends I did have, I held close, um, and they, you know, they, they were genuinely my friends, but for the most part, I got made fun of a lot for the way I looked, for being poor, all of that. So growing up, I started, I started lifting weights. I started, I started keeping up my appearance. We were still poor, but I thought that I could mask being poor with an appearance of muscle. So girls started taking more interest in me and it wasn't really a big deal to me at the time because I was just trying to make it to be in the NFL just so I can get my family out of a bad situation. That's all my thinking. I was like, I got no time for nobody. I got to do this so I can get my family out of this bad situation because we're tired of living poor. We're tired of being poor. And so when that didn't happen, I started lifting weights and I see my body develop. And I guess women see my body develop. So they started taking more of an interest in me. And at the time, it was all new and foreign to me. So I I was like, oh, wow, girls are actually looking at me. And so but that but that that old that old trauma that I've had of getting made fun of or just nobody. Nobody wants to be my friend. I I can't. It's just that mind state made me hurt people. Not intentionally, but I wasn't a good person to women. Now, I'm not saying that I did anything physically to them, but it was more mental. I didn't call them names, but sometimes I would lead them on and say I wasn't leading you on, or I would always have a backup. So if this didn't work out, I had a backup. And I know that's not right. I know that's horrible. And I take full responsibility for that. But I always felt like it was this tugging in my heart. I need to do better. I need to do better. And my cousin Dylan, he brought me to church. He took me to High Ridge. And so I was going, I was going. You know, I would I was just going for the sake of going. I wasn't going to get any benefit. I was just going and still living a sinful life, still living to the desires of the world. And it was one day that I met this this woman, who's now my wife. She changed my perspective about women and like I didn't have a backup plan with her. She was the only one. And she made me feel like all these new feelings and emotions and just everything. And it was wonderful. And I ended up marrying her. And then, you know, things started to to to, to take a turn in our in our marriage because of some stuff that happened before our marriage. Um, like having a, a child out of wedlock which was completely my responsibility. I'm the man I'm supposed to lead. It's, yes, it takes two, but the man is supposed to lead the household. The man is supposed to do this. The man is supposed to do that. So it all fell back on me. And, you know, it just, all of these, all of these emotions that I were projecting onto my wife, what I, I not, and I didn't even know I was projecting them onto her. And that was pushing her away. So I was pushing the person I love away because of all these unchecked emotions. 
all of these emotions that led back to I kept feeling like someone was telling me that this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And at the time, I didn't know that was God's voice. I was running from it. I I did not want to accept that God was real because of the simple fact that my dad passed from lung cancer. Now, my dad wasn't the best person, but I still loved my dad. And I used to pray. I used to pray. I used to pray. I used to pray that God could just save him. But God didn't save him. And I was angry at God for a while. And it's not that I, it's not that I was, I didn't believe. I was just, I was just, I was just, okay, God, I'm just going to put you on pause for right now. Because you don't answer prayers like you say you do. So while I'm pushing my wife away, she goes on a mission. She's in, a, she's in the military. She goes on a border mission. And this is when things really start to come to a head because all of my insecurities, I'm just pushing on her. I'm pushing on her while she's on the phone. I'm calling her, worrying about this, worrying about that. All of these things, and, I, and I'm just, I, it's like I'm suffocating her and I'm just pushing her even further away. I'm not listening to what she wants. I'm listening and doing what I want instead of just listening to my wife. And so I decided I was going to fast and pray. And within that same week, God sent me a message. He said, last chance. And then a few days after that, I had this dream. I don't even really think it was a dream. I think it was it was it was so real. But I was in hell. The best way I know how to describe it. It's not it's not what you hear people think. It's not fire. It's not this. I'm I will tell you what it is. Listen. It's sadness. It's a sorrow that you would never ever want to feel. It feels like you are drowning with all your emotions. It feels like you have, it feels like you're underwater. And you know, right when you get out of breath and you try to come back up, that's the feeling you feel in hell. It's dark. All I remember is darkness. Every now and then I would get a glimpse of something brown, look like a wall, look like cement. It could have been wood. I heard screaming. These screams were so unbearable. <laughs> it was so unbearable. And, and it was just so awful. I heard the scratching. It was just the screams. And just the sadness and the grief. Listen, I was going to hell. I was not going to heaven. See, I knew God. But I didn't know God in my spirit. If someone would have asked me if I was going to heaven or hell if I died, I would have said heaven. But I wasn't going to heaven. I, deep down in my heart, I was going to hell. And I felt like God showed me that to wake me up. And so on the last day that I was fasting and praying, I said, God, I'm not going to stop running until you give me a sign. And so I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And I start seeing these images like pop up in front of me. And it kind of faint. I don't I don't know how to describe these images, but it was it was it was like a person, but it wasn't a person and, I, and they had they had a sword and which was throwing me off, but they just kept coming and getting closer and then getting closer. And then I finally when I crossed over to the street from a, a traffic light, it was right in front of my face. I stopped and I just broke down and cried. I know that was God right there. So I walked back home, I called my wife on the phone, and we talked, and as we talked, I prayed before we talked, and the Holy Spirit came over me. I don't, I don't know how I made these words come to my mouth as quick as they did. It was just like instinct. I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking of what to say. It was, I was just speaking, and I had, I had this, I had goosebumps all over my body, and I was really cold, and I was shaking. And as 
we got ready to end the conversation, those feelings start to fade of the goosebumps, of the cold chills. It starts to fade. And I felt the presence of the Lord. And now, fast forward to now. I'm, I keep getting, I keep getting these words from God. Like, I don't, I didn't think I was ever going to share my testimony, mostly because I felt like people would think, oh no, he's just making that up. He didn't see hell or he didn't, he didn't see an angel from God, but I don't care if you believe this or not. I'm just doing what God tell me. I'm not going to play with him no more. Listen, not saying that, that you're not entitled to believe in what you believe in or this or that. But there's some things happening in my life right now. This, some of them are bad. Some of them are good. But I keep hearing these voices from God. And I keep hearing that last chance, last chance, last chance. So whatever God tell me to do, I don't play with him. I just do it now. I don't even think about it. If it's uncomfortable, I know it's God. If it's comfortable, it's the devil. I don't play with God no more. And I always pray for wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. <laughs> and what I've been wrestling with now is finances. Like, Lord, how come I don't have this? How come I don't have that? On top of praying for wisdom, knowledge, and discernment, God put me through tests that give me wisdom, put me through tests that give me knowledge, Put me through situations that give me discernment. And he kept telling me that I need to tell my story. I need to tell his story, how he saved me. And by me not listening, I feel like I was blocking so many blessings that he had for me. And I couldn't shake that feeling. I just couldn't shake that feeling. It was so deep in my stomach. And all it, it's... It's so real. And I don't think people, people, people just don't know how real hell is. Listen, hell is real. It's real. Listen, I'm telling you, it's real. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. The sadness that you feel down there. It's real. It's real. It's real. I don't want nobody to experience that. Listen. We ain't promised every day. Over 100,000 people die every day. That person could be you today, tomorrow, the next day. If you died right now, ask yourself, are you going to heaven or hell? And don't lie. Look at yourself in the mirror by the way you are living and ask yourself, are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? And I'm, I still, honestly, I don't even know what I'm saying. This, this is just, I just, all of these emotions right now, I feel the, the Holy Spirit is just in me right now telling me exactly what to say. Because I, I don't, I don't, I didn't think any of this out. This is all, I'm just saying it as it comes to me. I didn't think any of this out. I'm just saying it as it comes to me. I've been getting dreams that I'm supposed to do something important. I'm supposed to help people. That's one of the feelings that I'm getting. Every time I dream, I'm helping a person. I'm standing up somewhere and I'm speaking to people. I'm helping people. I feel that. I don't know what any of that means. I'm still figuring that out. But I will say, I've been actively reading my word every day. I think right now, consecutively, I'm at 165 days. And what I wanted to do, I told God, I said, God, if you turn my life around, I'll read the Bible from start to end. I'll read everything you've done, how you created the world, how you came down to the world. I will read your story, your life, your word, because you are the word and the word is you. And I know the only way to get to heaven is through you, through Jesus. <laughs> 
God's been turning my life around. And I'm not really sure how to end this, but God put it on me to tell you. I wasn't going to tell anyone, but God put it on my heart to tell this. I hope, I hope that this can help someone. And again, thank you if you stayed and watched the whole thing.